What is going on, guys and girls? Welcome back to Crusader Kings 2, a Game of Thrones during the Andal Invasion, where we play as the House Sunderland of the Sisters. And there's quite a couple of things I would like to talk about here in the first episode. As you, or if you know my channel, if you know my videos, then you will know that I like to take it slow. I like to ease myself into the series and set it up properly and not rush forward. So uh, we're gonna be spending some time today to talk about the goals of this campaign specifically. Um, and uh, yeah, that, that's actually kind of what I really want to start out with. I'm going to go over some important characters. I will be uh, yeah, setting up the court uh, ambitions and all these kinds of things that will be done in the first episode. But we will definitely have some combat uh, right in this episode as well. I think we're going to have the time to go on our first raiding. But yeah, um, what... What is the goal of this campaign? Now, most of you, I assume, are familiar with the scenario, the Andal invasion scenario. Obviously, we've got the Andals over here in Andalus, following the Faith of the Seven, and they now try to uh, conquer Westeros. And they've actually already started their conquest. They have landed in the Fingers, House Corbray being the, uh, well, foremost uh, adventurers here. And uh, they've already conquered some territory. And there's going to be more... Uh, people that will just attack. You will see that uh, as the series progresses. And obviously, as the system in, we are sort of in between here. You know, the old gods following uh, or worshipping old uh, the first men, they will try and defend their lands. And as the system in, we are in between for two reasons. First of all, we follow neither the old gods nor the faith of the seven. We actually follow our own religion, the Lady of the Waves, which is really, really cool. And uh, secondly, we actually have a very unique culture. Now, this is actually an adjustment I made when I first, or when I showed you the episode zero, like the, uh, yeah, the setup video, I guess. Um, I, I didn't have that just yet. I still had the first man culture, but I changed it manually to system and because... It just feels right. I mean, we are system and after all. Um, but this has a very interesting, yeah. Or well, this has very interesting consequences because as you can see here, system and are part of the Andal culture group. So uh, for what it's worth, we are considered to be Andals already. I don't really know how this can be explained. It's, uh, to be honest, this is kind of just an oversight from the devs. I think they've kind of just ignored the sisters in a way uh, because we started out as first men, which isn't, Correct. And another problem that we had was that all of our provinces right here were following the Faith of the Seven, indeed. That was actually very surprising. So all of these, like nothing has been converted in all of Westeros. All of this is still old gods, except for the sisters. They were all Faith of the Seven. So what I did is I used console commands to uh, change the uh, religion and uh, to change our culture as well. Because interestingly enough, even though the religion here in the province was wrong, it was Faith of the Seven, the culture was Systemen. So yeah, that just as an aside here at the beginning, um, what is our goal of this series? Because we're in this like, you know, weird spot, are we first men? Are we following the Faith of the Seven? You know, these kind of things. Um, I want, the, the yeah, the first and foremost goal here is independence. We will always try to be independent. That's our goal. Um, and eventually I might want to try and become a king as well. Right now we're just a duke. So uh, having a king kingdom title would be amazing as well. But that that's not the goal. The goal is definitely to stay independent. And uh, also the second goal is kind of to reform our religion. This is something I definitely want to do. Um, and for that, we need to have our, well, religious or our holy sites under control. Two of which we actually start out with, so that's good. But then we have the Wolf's Den, we have Gold Town, and we have Brava. So those are the provinces we're going to go after first. But uh, at the moment, we're too weak to really do any of that. So we're going to take advantage of the fact that we can actually raise men. Uh, I'm going to show you this real quick. And loot. This is a really big advantage that we have over other, uh, well, other claims and characters here. And uh, we're going to use that to a full advantage and in the beginning probably build up a pirate den here. We can build this all the way to a pirate fortress. Maybe we don't need to do that, um, but uh, we'll definitely have to build this up a little bit to become more powerful and then we can go on to some conquests. And in the meantime, we'll obviously watch the Andals and the First Men fight it out. And whenever there is a chance for us to strike, we will 
uh, we will for sure use it. Yeah, so that is that about our character. I actually want to talk about or want to talk more about our uh, our character and our wife and our daughter and so on and so forth. Um, because obviously I try to role play. I do have this like overarching goal that I just talked about, but the way we get there can be very different depending on which character we play and depending on the traits that that character has. And so, uh, yeah, that's that's how this series is going to go down. Now, before I actually talk more about my characters specifically, I've already marked some of them as important characters here. I want to talk about our best friend, uh, about Lord Dennis' best friend, uh, Bram of Bram of the Black Water. Is, is Bram? I think Bram is the right name. Uh, it's not Bron. It's Bram. Um, now, this is a character that was created by my Patreon supporter Overji. Thank you so much for your. Um, yeah, for your creation here. And I want to talk a little bit about this character here. Now, uh, I will not go full into full detail because he has a very long uh, background story already, even though he's just 19 years old. I'm not supposed to say 19 years young anymore, so I'll, I'll not do that. Um, uh, but you can find his biography in the description of this video, uh, so I'll link to the full uh, the full story. But let's uh, let me give you a quick rundown. Now, Bram is the best friend of both uh, Lord Dennis Sunderland and uh, his wife Miranda of the sisters, and basically he brought us two together. As you can see, Dennis and Miranda are lovers, and that's thanks to Bram. Now, um, he, despite being our best friend, he's a bit of a restless person. He's an adventurer in a way, and so at some point he decided to go on an adventure, and uh, he actually tried to steal our ship. And we found out about it, but, you know, uh, we forgave him, you know, he, he, it was it was a bit of a weird uh, situation. But in the end, we just decided to give him uh, a ship, the prettiest ship of our fleet, uh, so that he could go on to his adventure. And the ship is called the Pale, he actually has it here. It's just a small flagship, but still, it's, uh, it's rather pretty. And uh, that is, uh, yeah, that was his fleet, or his, yeah... The flagship of his fleet, which he then used to raid, and eventually he made his way all the way to the Blackwater and conquered this area, as you can see here. He's currently the High Lord of Blackwater Bay, and um, that's also where he got his uh, his sigil and name from. Um, he is obviously of the House Blackwater, and his sigil shows uh, the Pale, a pale ship with blue sails on black water. That's basically his coat of arms right there. Um, so yeah, he conquered uh, the territory here. He, he landed here, built a small fortress. Then he uh, conquered more territory. Uh, and one of them he named the Brams Fort right here. And then uh, he also got into uh, trouble with a local lord here. And he's actually rivaled with that person, Sir Arnold Thorne. He was once the king of the Blackwater Rush, but he was defeated and driven out by uh, Bram. And uh, yeah, so now they're rivals because of that. But Bram also has another rival, and that is Lord Corwin Corbury, the first Andal that managed to land in Westeros and conquer some lands. And uh, they, the Corbrys are actually upset with uh, Bram for two reasons. First of all, uh, he raided them on his way to Blackwater, he actually attacked the Fingers and, and raided them. Uh, the reason was that a Corbury fishermen were attacking a whale, and uh, that was, and they're trying to, uh, you know, kill him in a very cruel way or something like that. And Bran decided that he would want to save that animal, and uh, that actually was successful. And the whale now follows him. They've become friends in a way. It's very strange, um, but yeah. Uh, that's the first reason that uh, the Corbrys don't like him. And secondly, uh, during like the, the battle or whatever, um, Bram managed to abduct one of Lord Corwin's sisters, the Lady Tia Corbry, and she's now, as you can see, married to Bram. Now, she personally doesn't actually mind being uh, kidnapped all that much. Could kind of be a Stockholm Syndrome, but uh, mostly the reason is that she's a very ambitious woman and, you know, she was kind of just wasting away in middle of point, but right now she's actually the, well, the lady of, uh, of these lands. And so she doesn't really mind, right? Uh, as long as uh, Bram stays powerful, she will stay with him in a way. Yeah, that was uh, the short the short story of 
Bram, and uh, he's only 19 years old, so, you know, he can, uh, who knows what else he's uh, going to be able to achieve in his lifetime. He's definitely in a difficult spot here because, obviously, he has a uh, different culture and religion than the people he rules over. So, obviously, the people follow the old gods, and they uh, are obviously first men. So, we'll see how he, uh, how he does, but um, for now, we're going to have to focus on our own character. Now, we already established some relationships here. Obviously, we're in love with our wife. We have our friend Bram, and we have our daughter Zoe Sunderland, who's currently heir to our, uh, yeah, to our lands and titles. But we also have some vassals. Our primary bannerman is Lord Will Borel, who rules um, over sweet well not sweet sister what is it it's called breakwater yeah that's his uh, that's his uh, capital and uh, yeah they are on the same islands as us on sweet sister then we have got house longthorpe they rule over long sister and then we have got house torrent uh, ruling over little sister they are the weakest of our bannermen and uh, yeah but that's that's okay so all of them i think are on our council we have our justice raymond uh, yeah, then we've got Mass at Arms. He's actually a better spy master, Peter. Hmm. And then we've got our treasurer, Lord Will Borel. Okay, now he's very zealous. And also, by the way, I just want to mention here, that all of them, like all of our bannermen, uh, also the, uh, you know, the, uh, the mayors and stuff, I've changed their culture to system in as well. I changed all of their cultures. But we actually still have some people at our court that are, I think... I think we even have, like, someone who's favored the Seven or something. Well, well, at least our Maester is first men. Okay, yeah, there's some people that are first men. Um, but yeah. Anyways, so, yeah, this is our realm, our little realm. But, as I said, it's going to ex uh, expand and uh, grow over the course of the series. We're going to make Sunderland the Crown Focus. Obviously, it's the only uh, holding we hold personally. And we're going to have to quickly check out our character here. Uh, we're an incompetent commander. Okay, that's fine. But our martial score is actually not too bad. Uh, we're a trained fighter. We're brave and diligent. Uh, but we're also selfish and arbitrary. So those are kind of our bad traits. Uh, dual skill is actually relatively high. 55, not too bad. It's going to increase a little bit as we come of age. Very nice. And I think our focus here should be war for now, uh, specifically because we're going to go raiding and so on and so forth. And as for an ambition, um, a treasury could be interesting. Maybe a war chest could be good because we do need money. That would be 500 gold that we need to amass. That's a lot, though. That's quite a lot. Um, 2,000 prestige is going to be difficult. I think maybe having a son might be a good idea for now just to, um, yeah, just to keep our dynasty alive. Yeah, okay. We definitely need more children, right? So so that's that's for true. Okay, now we're going to be checking out our council, our cast castellan. Uh, you're going to be overseeing the realm. Sure, why not? Then our justice can just perform statecraft. That's fine. Organizing an army here. Mm, no, I think I want to actually train troops. Although organizing a raid could be interesting as well. 10%. Gather, gather men for a great... Great raid for plunder and glory. I could do that, or I could just raise this, train the troops. Um, I'm probably going to go with training troops for now, honestly, but maybe we'll do this at some point. We're also going to have uh, Lord Will collect some taxes. A spy master can just uh, scheme, that's fine. The maester is going to serve the court, and our priest is following the right religion, very good. We'll have him... Mm. Uh, we don't need to convert anything right now. I think we'll just have him perform charity over here for now. Although I don't think we have any revolt risk at the moment. Yeah, we don't have any. It's fine. Okay, so that's set up. We have um, um, some minor titles. A designated regent needs to be found. I think this should be our wife. There you go. And then... We have a court tutor, no handmaidens. Do we have better commanders? Not really. Okay. Master of Horse. We're going to give out some of these titles. Sure. Mm, Master of Hunt. We'll go with the Master of Arms here. 
and then Hayalmana will be Lord Will. Okay, and then as Cupbearer, mm, I don't want to appoint anyone just now, I think. This is a Traveler. Interesting. Uh, maybe have Lark our Priest as Cupbearer. I don't know. We'll, we'll leave that open for now. Uh, maybe, maybe we can give this position to someone else at some point. Okay, very good. So, yeah, that's all that. Anything else we need to do? Mm, there's obviously a lot of intrigue options we can go for. Uh, we're definitely gonna be building a flagship at some point, uh, but I kind of don't want to do it right now. We need the money. Um, we're gonna be establishing a household guard, all of these kinds of things we will do. We can also found a new kingdom. For that, we need two duchy titles. Okay, I might do that. That's actually not too difficult. Realm size must be equal to 20. Right now, our realm size is 9. Okay, so we need to double in size, and then we can form a kingdom. Okay, that doesn't sound too bad. I think that's very much possible. Good. So, I think we're going to be starting off immediately. Um, oh, there's one thing I should mention. I actually, because of because people um, uh, told me in the comment section, I actually changed some things. I, um, I changed something in the game rules. I don't remember what it was though. Well, I'm showing you right now. So maybe you can figure out <laughs> what it was. Okay, I just kind of forgot what it was. But either way, what we're going to do right now is we're going to raise our men. Um, and we're going to be raising our ships as well. Because we, we are going to go on our first raiding expedition. Let's get all of you here together. And we're going to obviously start, uh, we're gonna start with the aptly named Scorched Veil. Because this part of the veil is going to get scorched by the system end very soon here. Okay, let's move on forward a little bit. We had in command happen to us and a sworn shield uh, we can give. Oh, so this, yeah, so look at this. We have actually an Andal Knight at our court. Now this is because, once once again, this is because of how the mod started out. Uh, I don't think it's actually all that bad necessarily that we have this guy though because it kind of shows that, I mean, because look at this, he's a system in, right? It kind of shows that we we are between, we're, we're in between uh, both sides. We're neither fully first men old gods, nor uh, on the side of the Andal invaders themselves. We're somewhere in between, we're trying to uh, get our independence, or preserve our independence rather, and so that's, that's the reason. But yeah, I'm going to make both of these guys into our bodyguards, why not? Um, but I think Sir Lionel should be the one to lead our um to lead up household guard eventually but for now i'm just gonna mark an important character because he might actually be very uh successful in in our battles here um i'll just kind of want to keep an eye on this guy see what he does okay but yeah we're gonna get you guys together we're gonna lead ourselves and we're gonna have you know what we have so few troops there's no reason to have this um yeah, I want to have Sir Lionel leading with us in the center, and we'll only have one flank, and we're going to immediately go to the Scorched, Ve Ve Blah, Blah, Scorched Veil. I'm, this is going to happen a couple of times, that I'm going to be saying Scorched Whale. I try not to, but it's a difficult word. Anyway, let's move on. We can actually go a lot faster than that. A lot faster than that. There you go. Okay. And, yeah. Lord Bram of Blackwater Bay has declared Lord Bram's invasion on Master Norbert of Faring Cross. I'm not sure. You only have a thousand men. Uh, oh, right, so, okay, that's interesting. He actually started out with the Bramsford and Hayford in his control, but I think there were, yeah, look at this. We only have a domain size of one, so he likely had the same problem. But look at this, uh, Lord John waves a system in. He has been given the Lordship of Hayford, and then Bramsford is in control of Caring. Ray Carring, another system. And so, interesting. Very interesting. We've got three system and lords. I wonder if he's able to take over Faring Cross. We'll see. I feel like he might actually lose. Um, either way, we're going to be continuing on our raids. Hey there, everyone. Sorry for the quick cut here. Um, it was not because the game crashed or anything. It actually has a very different reason. Our best friend, Bram, uh, managed to get himself killed in the very first battle. Uh, of this game and um, you know he's a custom character 
uh, Overg spent a long time creating him. I spent a long time actually getting him into the game and talking about him. So having him die in the very first episode is kind of stupid. And specifically because we haven't actually done anything yet. Uh, we've just uh, basically set up uh, our character. I've done the same exact things I did before. Like, you know, the same ambition, the same uh, focus. I even... I don't think I gave my daughter a focus before, so I've done that now, and, you know, I've given my counselors the same uh, positions and uh, same jobs and so on and so forth. I even gathered my fleet. One thing that is different, for some reason, I really don't know why, but we seem to have uh, different, some more different characters at our court. So, for example, remember when I gave out the... Uh, body cut titles, we actually only had two, one of which was Lionel. We now have a third, Osmond, and Lionel is not a knight right now. I don't know why that changed. I didn't do it. Who knows? But uh, yeah, that's just the way it is. Either way, we are just gonna, well, con continue with what we wanted to do anyways, is, uh, yeah, land on the Scorched Vale. We're gonna try and raid that, and hopefully this time, Bram is not gonna get himself killed immediately. We're gonna, once more, Try and move forward faster and see what happens this time. He once again declared this war. This is what he did last time too. I just hope he doesn't die. This campaign has been proof that Lionel is a good person to spend time with. I highly... Oh, I value his opinion highly and trust him on the battlefield. A brother in arms. Now, this is so interesting. I love this. This is so cool because we now have a friend who is following the Faith of the Seven. So this is a really big deal. Um... Specifically because of one thing I wanted to show you. We're going to actually mark him an important character now because he's our friend. So that's kind of cool that this happened. He actually looks kind of just like us. But yeah, this is specifically important because they're, uh, you know, one of the goals of this campaign is to reform our religion. And one of the doctrines we can choose from actually allows to have to follow knightly virtues. Um, let me quickly see if I can find that for you. I think it shows somewhere down down here. Mm, worship of the Seven. Look at this. So we can freely intermarry with characters who worship the Seven. And uh, relationship is increased. And we have access to the traditions of knighthood and tournaments. And that is really cool. And this is something I could see happen if we actually have... Well, if we actually have a friend who is maybe a knight following the, the Faith of the Seven and so on and so forth. So this is really cool development so far. I hope that Bram doesn't die uh, this time. And uh, we get to experience this as well. But yeah, uh, so far so good. Um, we are looting, obviously. Taya Corbry now died while she was pregnant. This isn't good either, but... You know, um, that's fine. That's fine. Uh, he's actually losing his war because there's a lot of people that are def coming to uh, Nobot's defense here. Uh, but that's just the way it is. You know what? That's fine. Uh, I don't like it, but that's okay. Okay. Um, Lord Will was... Oh, he was attacked by peasants. Well, that's not good. Oh, he was attacked twice. Well, I that sucks for you. He's actually wounded as well. I... Yeah, that's, that's really unfortunate. Okay, and Bram, he gave up some lands. Right? Tristan Waves we have. And Alan Carr. I think I showed this. Maybe? I don't know. I'm a little bit confused now, but anyways. Okay, so Tia died, Tia Cobri died in the dungeons, but yeah, um, that's okay. We'll just be moving on anyways. Samuel of Langwood Hall, okay. So yeah, basically what I want to do is we've raided all we could, but we have enough men to actually sack the holding, so that's what I want to do. With 90%, and Blackholm has been looted for 6 gold. Very good. Now... And uh, since the siege was successful, we actually get to take a concubine, potentially. This is the Lord's sister, Ariana of Blackholm. Okay, then we have got Sylvia, some random person. Okay, and we've got Lady Ravella. This is the Lord's wife. Okay, so we have... We're going to disregard the random person. We have to, to choose between the Lord's wife and his sister and i think i'm actually going to go with the sister first of all she's younger and secondly she i mean this wife she's a nobody basically 
Um, so I think I'm gonna go with the sister because she's noble. This is she's actually completely terrible. Holy balls. She is completely stupid. But okay, she'll make a fine concubine, I guess. Man, she must be boring as hell. Well, we'll, we'll take her anyways. We'll, we'll take her as our concubine. Our first concubine, our first successful conquest here. And now, as the name suggests, the veil is scorched. Ah, uh, very nice. Very nice indeed. We're going to be um, taking the rest of the money as well. And then we'll move back to our ships once there's nothing more. Um to loot. Okay, and my intense study of warfare has led to an increased understanding of tactics and strategy. Oh, wow! Immediately after one single raid, we have improved from an incompetent commander to a dutiful one. That's actually really good. So this is giving us two marshal. This is giving us four marshal. Wow. All right. Well, so far, uh, this bodes rather well. Eldersi has died of the Prussian. She's uh, Lord Peter Torrance's uh, mother. Okay. And how are you doing, Bram? You were doing... You're still alive. You've taken a loan, but you're still alive. So, yeah. Very nice. Okay, on that note, I'm going to be ending this first episode. I hope you guys have enjoyed, and I will see you next time.